Good afternoon and thanks for having us in. This midday, we're learning more about the investigation into South Dakota philanthropist T. Denny Sanford. The investigation never led to charges, but newly unsealed documents describe the evidence that led authorities to Sanford. It all started with a cyber tip about child pornography in 2019. Over the next few years, investigators gathered information about Sanford's phone, email accounts, and his internet and cellular history. The documents link illegal images of children to Sanford's California home and a business trip to Sioux Falls. Sanford's attorneys claim his phone had been hacked and he did not break the law. We posted a statement from his attorney and the redacted documents on Kelloland.com. A man is in critical condition following an officer-involved shooting in Cherry Creek, South Dakota, which is on the Cheyenne River Reservation. An officer was called to a home Monday evening for an assault. When police arrived, they found a man holding down a woman on a bed. Authorities say the suspect kicked a taser out of an officer's hand and stabbed the officer's ballistic vest. As the struggle continued down the hallway, the officer shot the suspect three times in the chest. The man was taken to Rapid City, where he's in critical condition. The woman was also taken to the hospital for her injuries. The officer also treated for injuries at the hospital before being placed on administrative leave. A 27-year-old woman was arrested in Brookings in connection with a hit-and-run crash that injured a 5-year-old girl. Police say the girl was riding her bicycle with family along Medary Avenue. They stopped at an intersection before starting to cross. Officers say the driver of a Jeep didn't see the family and clipped the bicycle. The girl was taken to the hospital for minor injuries. Police say the driver left the scene without stopping to check on the family. A witness helped investigators track down the suspect, Lindsay Johnson. She was arrested for failure to report an accident. An 18-year-old man was hurt after a car and lawnmower collided in Brookings. Police Department says the crash happened Tuesday afternoon at the intersection of Main Avenue South and Bluebell Drive. Investigators say the lawnmower was crossing Main Avenue and didn't see the car coming. The car swerved to avoid hitting the lawnmower, but the two still crashed. The 18-year-old was thrown from the lawnmower. He was treated at the scene for minor injuries. Turning now to a first look at your midday forecast with meteorologist Scott Munt. Looks like that tail and of the uh, shower starting to extend out a little bit closer to Sioux Falls, Scott. You know, when you walked in the studio, I said, hey, Travis, look at this. <laughs> there was excitement in the air. <laughs> there was. And you Rain. Said, and you said, hey, send that over to the eastern side of Sioux yeah, Falls. Yeah, I'll take some. Yeah, I think everybody will in southeastern South Dakota. We'll continue to follow the showers and thunderstorms that uh, are developing as we speak. In fact, this is a radar loop over the past 30 minutes. And as it stops here a little bit after noon, you see that broken line. But as it starts going back about a half hour, there's not much to show. So it's nice to see these developing thunderstorms here into southeastern South Dakota. We'll see what we can do about getting more widespread rains across eastern and southeastern Kettleland as we go through the day. Temperature in Sioux Falls is now at 84 as we continue to follow that line just to the west of the city. It is moving north and slightly to the northeast. We have that southerly wind at 14 miles per hour. And you can see how the line Line of showers and thunderstorms that near Madison, west of Brookings, over toward Redfield. Again, everything is moving to the north. We'll stop a closer, we'll take a closer look here in the Brown County and some rain showers knocking on the doorstep of Aberdeen. Again, that too is moving to the north. And we have some spotty showers and thunder showers near Arlington and just to the south and southeast of Clark, moving to the north and northeast. So Watertown may get clipped with a shower or thunder shower this afternoon. Where we have a temperature of 84, currently 81 in Brookings, 86 in Aberdeen, 74 in Pier, and 76 in Rapid City. And the winds are around 10, maybe 20 miles per hour to cover eastern Kettleland coming in from the south. And every now and then we may get a higher gust. Temperature near 90 today in Sioux Falls. If we do get a thunder shower to roll through, we may have a hard time hitting that. But we'll go with that partly cloudy sky in the meantime. Numbers only falling to the middle 60s for lows tonight. In Aberdeen, temperatures in the upper 80s today. We will watch for scattered showers and thunderstorms. Lower 60s for lows tonight. And our forecast into central South Dakota. Looks like we will have a warm day. High near 90. Mostly sunny skies in central Kettleland and western South Dakota. You can expect temperatures in the middle 80s. We'll also watch western South Dakota for developing showers and storms. More details on your Kettleland live Doppler forecast coming up. 
Thank you, Scott. As some residents of an Iowa apartment building that partially collapsed remain unaccounted for, officials in the city of Davenport say they were able to rescue several pets from a safer area of the six-story building. Davenport authorities have not provided an update on the number of people missing since Tuesday when they said five people were unaccounted for, including two who could still be in the wreckage. Rescue teams entered a part of the building on Tuesday that was deemed a low risk and rescued several animals. All eyes are on the House of Representatives as the bipartisan deal to raise the debt ceiling goes to a full House vote later today. The results could avoid an unprecedented default on the nation's debt. Leaders from both parties are trying to shore up enough votes to pass the measure, even as hardliners on both sides of the aisle express their opposition. Natalie Brand has the latest from Capitol Hill. I am undecided, but I'm ready to hear what the White House has to say. On Capitol Hill Wednesday, House Democrats huddled behind closed doors for a briefing with White House negotiators before a high-stakes vote tonight. I'm confident that we will avoid a catastrophic there are just days to go before the Treasury Department says the U.S. will run out of money to pay its bills. The vote on today's deal would lift the debt limit past the 2024 election. And new projections by the Congressional Budget Office indicates it would cut spending by $1.5 trillion over a decade. Trillions and trillions of dollars in debt for crumbs for a pittance. Some conservatives are putting up a fight, vowing to vote no. There are also concerns from progressive Democrats. We also need to hold our ground and stand up for the most vulnerable Americans. The bill squeaked out of the House Rules Committee late last night with two Republicans voting against it. Even with GOP hardliners opposed, Speaker McCarthy has signaled to reporters the votes are there. No, it matters it's going to become law. If the bill passes the House, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer has put lawmakers on notice. Senators should be prepared to move on this bill quickly. That he wants to bring it to the Senate floor as soon as possible. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Capitol Hill.